Picture this. An ordinary gas station worker and janitor dies and leaves an 8 million dividend portfolio for his family and charity. Sounds like a fictional story, right? Well, let me introduce you to Ronald Reid, a true dividends investment success story. A man with no financial literacy background who grew up on a farm, only finished high school and worked as a janitor for minimum wage for most of his life. With an average janitor salary of $28,000 which I reckon will be significantly lower in the 90s and 2000s. Ronald was still able to transform this and build an $8 million portfolio and here's how he did it. Ronald understood the secret of what formula the school doesn't teach you. And it's simple. The formula is income minus expenses equals cash flow. That is how much money you have coming in minus how much money you have going out equals to how much you have left to work with. If you have a positive cash flow, it means you have money left over and if you have a negative cash flow, it means you are falling into debt. For example, let's say your monthly income is $5,000 and your expenses is greater than or equal to $5,000, then your cash flow is zero or negative, which means you will never be financially free and you will need to work until the day you die. However, if your expenses is less than $5,000, you have a positive cash flow which you can deploy into savings or investing. That way, you have your money working for you and generating even more money. The more positive cash flow you have, the more wealth you can create. For every 5% of extra income that you save or invest, you can retire multiple years earlier. Check this out. Suppose you have an annual income of only $30,000 and you plan to retire with a million dollars. If you invested 10% of it annually, that is $3,000 at a 10% annual growth rate, you will reach your million dollar target in 37 years. But get this. If you reduce your expenses and invest just 5% more, that is, you invested 15% or $4,500, you will reach your million dollar goal in 33 years. So, for just 5% more effort, you can shave off more than 4 years towards reaching your goal. You see, the average American spends over $18,000 every year on non-essential items and about $300 a month on random import purchases. Come on guys, do you really need to spend $177 on takeout every month? How much money you have saved by your current age is key in measuring if you are financially on track to becoming a millionaire at retirement. And you need to know this so you can adjust your finances before it's too late. For example, at a conservative 8% annual growth rate accounting for inflation, if you start investing at 20 years old, you need to save about $209 per month to retire a millionaire by 65. If you started investing and saving at 30, you will need to save $469 per month. At 40, you will need to save $1,100 per month. At 50, you will need to save $2,965 a month. Like most things in life, the earlier you start, the easier it will be because of time. But since I don't know your financial situation, these calculations are based on a few assumptions. 1. You are starting with $0 in savings. Two, you can grow your investment at 8% on average yearly, which is something that can be done with the S&P 500. Three, you are not increasing your monthly contribution each year, but in reality, you will increase your contribution as you make more money, be it through a raise at work or other means. While researching for his book, Rich Habit, Tom Curley concluded from the surveys he conducted that more than 75% of millionaires came from a poor background and were self-made, just like Renard Reid. But one thing he noticed all millionaires have in common is that nearly all of them have multiple sources of income, anywhere ranging from 3 to 5. Renard Reid had two main ones, his janitor jobs and his investing. There are two main benefits to having more than one source of income. One. You reduce your dependency on any single source of income, including your full-time job. I mean, you might think your full-time job is safe and secure, but it's actually more riskier than you may think. Because the moment your boss says you're fired, and let's face it, it's more likely now than ever, you will be financially ruined. 
two you can supercharge your wealth formula by increasing your cash flow there's always a limit to how little you can live off even if you live on rice and beans and water but there's no limit on how much you can earn even if you manage to earn as little as hundred dollars extra weekly your cash flow and wealth increases substantially to earn more money you could do the traditional thing like do a bit of overtime ask for a raise get an extra qualification and get a better job or even set aside also if you're enjoying or getting anything from this video so far please do like this video and subscribe to the channel it helps the channel tremendously and also leave a comment on your best tips to becoming a millionaire on a very low salary Ronald Reed didn't become a multi-millionaire from just perfecting his cash flow formula he had one other secret up his sleeves and when he died the truth finally came out no one I mean no one not even his family knew about this but Ronald Reed had been investing in 95 different stocks throughout his lifetime. Investing your positive cash flow is the key ingredient in building wealth but it's vital you do it correctly. One mistake you absolutely need to avoid like a plague is day trading. I'm sure you've seen it on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube about people analyzing charts buying and selling 20 different times a day and hoping it goes up thinking it's really exciting and is the key to getting rich. But here's what they don't tell you. 90% of day trader lose money. Renard Reed, in all his wisdom, didn't day trade. Instead, he focused on the fundamentals of a company which meant he analyzed the company intrinsic value and made sure the investment makes sense both quantitatively and qualitatively. But the good thing is, you don't even need to do any of that to get the same return. Just by buying a low-cost index fund like the S&P 500 for over a long period of time, you will be on track to generating something equivalent. Would you rather have a million dollars or a penny? Seems like an easy decision, right? But what if I told you that this penny has been imbued with some magical powers and would double every day for 30 days? Would that change your decision? It probably wouldn't for most people as the allure of a million dollars today sounds compelling. But if you were smart, you would pick the magic penny because check this out. On day two, you'd have only two pennies. On day 10, you have just about five dollars. On day 20, you have about $5,000. By now, you'd be wishing, ooh, I wish I had taken the million dollars. But you'd be wrong because on day 28, you would have crossed the million dollar mark. And on day 30, you would have over $5 million. And this is what Renard Ray did. Every two weeks when he got his janitor paycheck, he kept adding to his investment. He invested for the long term, which allowed his money to compound for decades. So how does compounding work? I'm glad you asked. Let's say you saved or invested a thousand dollars in year one at a 10% interest rate. You'd make a hundred dollars in interest that year, which would mean your starting balance in year two will no longer be a hundred thousand dollars, but a thousand one hundred dollars. At the end of year two, you would have made another 10% on your one thousand one hundred dollars, which is a hundred and ten dollars. So your starting balance in year three is no longer a thousand one hundred dollars, but instead it's now a thousand two hundred and ten dollars. Behold the magic of compounding, which is why Albert Einstein said compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. And this is exactly how majority of Warren Buffett's wealth was actually acquired according to the book The Psychology of Money. As at the time the book was written, Buffett's net worth was around $84.5 billion of which $81 billion came after his 60th birthday. He started investing at the age of 10 and by age 30 he had over a million dollars in investment and it just kept going and going. Quick question. What would you do if you see the stock market crash by 50% tomorrow? Obviously, most of us are going to sell because we don't want to lose any money. However, throughout Ronald Reed's life, he witnessed 11 stock market crashes and bear market and yet he still held on to his investment because he knew this one secret. You can't time the market. Your best bet is to just keep investing for the long term regardless of if the market goes up or down. When you think you can time the market, you are essentially making two bold guesses. One, you know when the market has reached the top and you got out just in time before any crashes. And secondly, you know when the market has reached the bottom and you bought back in at or near the very bottom. And based on numerous researches and common sense, when it comes to predicting the future, the odds are not in your favor. 
the University of Michigan conducted a study that measured returns from 1963 to 2004 and found that 96 percent of the positive return over that period came from just 85 percent of the trading days. Another study from JP Morgan measuring the value of $10,000 invested in the S&P 500 from January 2003 to December 2022 shows that if an investor were to miss the best 10 days in the market, they would have lost over 50 percent of their end portfolio value. The investor would finish with a portfolio of only $29,700 compared to $64,800 if they had just stayed put. Oh, and it gets worse if they missed out on the best 20, 30, 40 or even 50 days. So what does this all mean? It means that when the market goes up, it moves up very quickly and if your money is on the sidelines, you'll be missing out on some of the best days that the market has to offer. So stop trying to time the market. Time in the market beats timing the market. Nobody is perfect not even run at rate. As intelligent as he was, some of his investments failed woefully and miserably, such as Lehman Brothers, which collapsed during the 2008 financial crisis. But despite this setback, he still continued to invest and he was able to get through this because his investments were well diversified with other stocks. Here's the thing, we all make mistakes. Maybe you made a bad investment in the past or you think you are starting too late or you bought something unreasonable, but I'm here to tell you it's okay, don't give up, just keep going. But one thing you absolutely cannot make a mistake with is having bad or sometimes dangerous habits that are eroding your wealth and cash flow, thereby keeping you poor. Watch this video to learn more about money habit that is keeping you poor this year. And I'd love to hear what you think about Renard Reid's story in the comments. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so.